Ja, die met het twee maal langer mee dan mislukte imitatie. This is the BBC, with the Daily Minutes podcast. Oh no it isn't. I mean this is the Daily Minutes podcast. This is however not the BBC. Als er een natuurramp gebeurt, vertrouw jij dan je leven toe aan het feit dat mobiele telefoons en internetverbindingen nog werken? Vertrouw je daar het leven van je gezinsleden aan toe? Ik dacht het niet. Amateurradio. Communicatie die altijd blijft werken. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. And what a good day to have a good day. Daily Minutes, 20 August 2021. This is our bulletin of Friday. Daily Minutes, 20 August 2021. This is our bulletin of Friday. And it's really early, as I often do uh, when I can't sleep. I'm, I'm working around 6, 10 it is now. Yesterday I had the first bit more... Uh, yesterday I had uh, the first a bit more serious uh, video out. I must say I really wasn't too pleased because uh, my English was rather bad. <laughs> I can't do much better. Don't know why it was. I wasn't nervous or something, but uh, well, it didn't work out. As I listened it back because at the moment itself I didn't notice. Uh, well, a sip of my coffee and uh, this star is uh, switched on. I forgot to switch it off uh, yesterday evening, but uh, normally I sleep through it, so I guess this isn't a factor. But the unboxing uh, video of the PL368 I'm talking about, uh, I had a lot of favorable, uh, a lot. Of, I had several favorable responses uh, to that. It's uh, posted eight hours ago. It's done significantly, significantly good in the number of uh, views, the number of uh, views of the video until now, but uh, especially because uh, most views are probably uh, during the night because I uh, posted it uh, the second half of the evening. But I'm not satisfied. I gotta do better. Uh, not only that, I can do better. My relationship to English is a bit complicated. I started being interested in what it would be speaking English when I was five or six years old. I was very early with uh, many things. Uh, I don't mean to brag, but it really was the case. We had uh, a neighbor who had a, th a daughter that was one year older than me, who was uh, very late uh, talking, although nothing wrong with her intelligence or so, but she simply was uh, very late. And uh, one time I was with my father in... Uh, our shed below the apartment building we were living. My father had uh, a dark room there, and I learned to develop photos as young as five or six years old. But I was much younger at the time, and uh, my father had a complete conversation. And there was a wall. It, the, 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 it was it was a room that was L-shaped, and there was a wall where I could st stand behind. And this neighbor came about and asked my father who he was talking about this elaborate but um, my father said uh, that's my son <laughs> and he wouldn't believe it he really wouldn't believe that uh, it was me my father was uh, talking about uh, about several quite complicated concepts so uh, I must have been uh, three or four years old I became politically aware when I was uh, five or six years old, uh, realizing what was happening in the 60s, early 60s. And uh, later I became, became a, a great fan of our Provo movement, which was uh, one of the 60s movements, uh, which you saw in other countries as well. In recent years, I had some working together with uh, Rolf van Duin very uh, briefly, 
we both had a dating site at the moment, which was a, was a bit alter, alter, alternative. And I, I also had a new site about dating sites at the time, which was 15 years ago or something. And uh, he was doing uh, similar things, so uh, it was nice to cooperate. But he was one of my youth heroes <laughs> when I was seven years old or so. He was a saint to me. Uh, Provo had all these plans, like the white bike plan. You see that nowadays. I'm looking at an image of one of my videos from the go scooters that uh, drive through my uh, city. You can rent uh, a go scooter with your uh, uh, with your smartphone. It's almost like the white uh, bike plan of Lut Schimmelpanning, who introduced it in 1970, uh, 1968 or something. Uh, around that time the white bike plan this is a green scooter plan but it's uh, similar it has an environment uh, touch to it because the scooters are electric well you see them in many uh, cities uh, nowadays similar in, uh, initiatives all over the world but uh, they were early with that kind of things they were also very much uh, socialist perhaps uh, mis maybe communist uh, I've sympathized that uh, with that uh, for some years, also with communism, although I wasn't uh, of the totalitarian, uh, to total how do you call it, totalitarian uh, brand, because I detested what they did in Russia, but uh, and in, in in China as well. But around my nineteen or twenty years, I began to realize that there were cracks in the system, cracks, and uh, it m had some major flaws, which became most apparent when in Mao's uh, China, I heard that uh, uh, exceptionally uh, uh, excep exceptional workers in factories got, uh, got a bonus. I, I didn't know what I heard. They got a financial a financial bonus as an incentive to keep up uh, the good work they did. What's wrong with uh, everyone uh, being similar? That's that that's not <laughs> that's not what we bargained for. So uh, soon after that, uh, I realized uh, I should become an entrepreneur and uh, on a small scale and sympathetic non-competitive but uh, I must confess I'm a capitalist although many people should uh, see me as leftish but uh, um, I'm st I do find it very strongly that you should protect the innocent uh, and the people that are not uh, very able to and not a clever, perhaps, but uh, I don't want to call people that way, but uh, it probably is. But I was amazingly uh, aware of things, really young, and that was also why I became interested in what it would have been. I always uh, thought of myself, what, what would it be if my first language wouldn't have been uh, Dutch, but would have been, or, or, perhaps, uh, um, or perhaps the Low Saxon dialect. Uh, it is a, a region, a language, which is spoken in uh, the northeastern part of the Netherlands, except for the Frisian part, which is a different language. And the Netherlands is really small. It uh, it hasn't it isn't much more than uh, two twenty miles across, and that's a complete country. But uh, we have these enormous language differences that people in uh, countries like America can't even imagine. <laughs> I know uh, certain fruit in. Limburg, uh, our southern province, uh, is called differently if you uh, go uh, go 10 kilometers uh, away from the place where you are. And, of course, people do understand uh, each other's uh, dialect, uh, which are fairly similar, but, uh, well, people from the north uh, normally can't uh, understand people from Limburg. They find that very difficult. And the other way around, too. 
And Frisian is a, a completely different language, which is spoken in uh, one of our uh, 12 or 13 uh, provinces. Traffic signs are in both languages. And it is a really small group. I don't know how many people. I'm, I'm half Frisian, half uh, Lower Saxon, you can say. But uh, I don't. I do understand Frisian, but I don't speak it. But uh, probably my um, fascination for this be, be, was also because my grandparents were primarily Frisian and uh, talked to my my father, who was whose first language was Frisian as well. Um, although being uh, bilingual, but I was always uh, curious about this and uh, what they were saying. Uh, amongst each other, and Frisian as well as people from Limburg are a bit of pro a bit protective in their language use. Although being very impolite, they, uh, they tend to speak their own language uh, amongst each other, and uh, cutting out uh, people from uh, the western part of the Netherlands from their conversations. So uh, I did know this aspect as well. When, for instance, my father wanted to say something the kids shouldn't be able to understand they uh, switched <laughs> swiftly to Frisian uh, he and his brother and uh, also with his sister and parents the sister was born when my grandparents lived in the low Saxon speaking part of the Netherlands and they asked uh, the two brothers to speak uh, Frisian to their young sister so she she should learn as well which was very wise she got married later with a Frisian and uh, lived a uh, major part of her life there so it was very good that she uh, spoke the language but well maybe she uh, didn't um, <laughs> got involved with uh, her later husband if she wouldn't have spoken the language, I would have. I don't know. That's pure speculation. But it was. Uh, it turned out quite handy that she spoke that. But uh, we moved from the lower Saxon part of the Netherlands to uh, the higher Dutch-speaking, algemeen beschaafd Netherlands. Algemeen beschaafd Netherlands is what we call it. But uh, um, that was also the area where I could. Uh, I did have uh, very early uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, a small radio, first one of the design icons of Sony. My father did dislike that very much, so he bought another one, which I still have. And I'm sorry that I, didn't ha I don't have the Sony anymore, which is, uh, of, uh, I think it's uh, worth uh, quite a few uh, dollars uh, at the moment. But uh, I don't know where it has gone, but my father... Uh, it didn't want me to have the luxury of having two radios, so I got a, he got away of the, the 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 previous one. But on that radio, I could receive the uh, the English uh, uh, offshore radio stations, which were on ships on the on the North Sea, uh, very well. And uh, I started listening to them. And after uh, there was a TV course uh, starting with English that I. Uh, that I watched uh, every uh, rerun they did, being six years old. And I think it was seven uh, when the radio ships uh, started to uh, pop up on the North Sea with uh, Radio Caroline as the first. Uh, I was a fan of the very uh, much American-inspired Radio London, uh, large, uh, uh, a large part of the time. I did like their... Uh, bom somewhat bombastic uh, jingle package uh, at that time and... Uh, the first thing I started uh, understanding quite well that was the weather reports and after that the news and uh, of course uh, uh, the DJs with their fairly simple use of English uh, language altogether because in all languages they are not uh, fairly complicated. Uh, I kept getting uh, large difficulties understanding song text, lyrics because uh, <laughs> they aren't spoken or sung uh, too profound. And uh, until a recent date, uh, they are difficult. But they are difficult in Dutch as well. So uh, I got a good excuse there. But I was very curious about it. Uh, and only when I became a translator, I became very affluent, very, 
no, it's not affluent, very fluently and uh, in at least understanding English and writing it. I do write it very well. But uh, I have uh, something that prevents me from uh, sometimes, uh, and, and probably that was the, the problem in the, in the video as well, I mirror the the language that the people I talk to speak. Because, especially in Dutch, I do understand much of our dialects very well. Um, I do understand dialects of uh, Frisian, most of them. I read Frisian uh, without a problem, also literature. But... Uh, I copy what people speak. So if I, I'm talking to an American, within a few minutes, um, what I say will sound very American. And doing a, a radio program, I think I don't need the reference as much, but I do need this reference to 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 know what I what I want to uh, what I want to sound like. Uh, and this is uh, something I do, don't do very conscious. Oh. <clears throat> I almost dropped my uh, recorder, but that, that hasn't happened before. <laughs> I had an itch on my chin and I almost knocked it out of my hand. But uh, what was I saying? <laughs> well, this, this reference I need and um, probably doing a video which is not uh, something I do very often, I... Something like a free-running oscillator, I <laughs> I go one way and another, and then start, uh, start sounding very Dutch, which I don't like. I always have problems with... Um, with clients from the Netherlands... I do translations from Dutch to English and also uh, from UK English to US English, English and the other way around. Uh, as I do with uh, the, the, the Dutch and Flemish variants of the Dutch language as well. And I also do uh, mostly with Dutch and English, but I have done it in, uh, with, uh, mostly with Dutch and Flemish, but I have done it in English as well. Uh, making texts that are acceptable to, to both language variants, be, being uh, UK and uh, US English as the most, uh, the most uh, mentioned, uh, most used difference. But there's also, there's also large differences between Australian and, to some extent, uh, Canadian uh, English. I do like Canadian English. <laughs> I think that is the variant I like the most. Don't know why. Not the pronunciation. They say out instead of out. <laughs> but uh, New Zealanders say lift instead of lift. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't know why, but it, 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 Canadian sounds uh, very friendly, really. And the British sounds a bit uh, stiff upper lip. I don't like that. I don't like the Queen's English. The, that is too much for me. But I also don't like the Dutch variant of it. Uh, Bekakt, as we call it. Posh, they say in Britain. I don't know if Amer Americans even have a, a proper word for it. But uh, I don't like that. I don't like be uh, trying to look better than what you are. People are all equal to me. Uh, if you're what what color you have, what back background you have, I always try sincerely to have an open mind and not to judge. That is so wrong. Every people, every everyone, every person is a person. Is unique. It should be treated as such. I sincerely believe. I'm very mad if people don't. All people are equal. And this is also true for people who talk bekakt or posh. <laughs> um, should I say the, what, what 
is coming up in my mind now. Um, I do think some languages and accents are very sexy. <laughs> really. Um, sometimes posh sounds very sexy. Even. Um, can. Um, I don't like Geordie English. Uh, that's not sexy, but Liverpool uh, really is. <laughs> and... Uh, I had um, I had that I have had several German uh, I don't I'm not uh, a Don Juan or something, but uh, I'm not very good at relationships. So I did have several German girlfriends. I do like the uh, the sound of German. Uh, um, not always, but uh, well, I, I, I do like like that, and even uh, a German accent in Dutch. So. That worked uh, very well, I can say. But um, it does matter how much. Uh, I know a friend of mine very, very long time ago once told me that he was in the military and he was in the northern part of the Netherlands and he saw this amazingly beautiful woman in a pub and uh, he wanted to get to know, to know her better and he said she opened her mouth and then all the magic was gone. <laughs> And the northern dialects uh, in the Netherlands do do that. They sound uh, very rural. And uh, especially to uh, people of the same language, they uh, don't work very well if uh, to, to, uh, to the male kind, in many cases, if you are from the other part of the, the, the country. So that's also true. The language is very interesting. It has many aspects. But I, I guess my not too good English in the, in the, in the video might be the, the, the freewheeling effect. So uh, me not having a reference. And also doing all kinds of other things. I, I know what I'm doing now. I have two microphones before me. One for the left and one for the right. And I'm holding this recorder just as a, as an HT, as a portable radio, uh, 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 portable radio transceiver, which I'm very used to talking into. So this all feels very uh, trusted and uh, all very normal. No distractions. And with video, you have a lot of distractions. Not for television, because all kinds of other people. Doing your makeup, doing your lighting, doing everything. But uh, being a flogger, which I'm still not really am, but uh, you have to do everything yourself. Unless you c you're successful enough to hire all kinds of people, which is possible uh, nowadays. But it, this will cost a lot. You would, uh, you, have, you would have to have a significant uh, audience to being able to do that. But you've got to do everything yourself. And I'm manipulating a, 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 a portable radio receiver, uh, showing all its possibilities, showing what you want to tell about that, because you have an idea. What you, I, I was starting this podcast, I didn't have an idea. I, uh, I just go with the flow. But uh, with video, you got to have a concept of what you want. So uh, that's all much of a distraction. I think uh, I will get better to be better with it because uh, I always do. I always do, but uh, I have to get some practice. I'm not satisfied with the unboxing of the PL368 uh, video. Not at all. I I can do lots lots better. So I will have to do lots better. But that was the idea of starting uh, these kinds of videos in the first place. I got a bit. I got a bit complacent doing uh, doing these audio podcasts. I have to step out of my confidence. How do you say that? Your your what zone? Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, comfort zone it is. I have to step out of my comfort zone because otherwise, otherwise you won't achieve things. If you stay doing a trick you know well, you got ever better in it until the improvements go very start going very slowly. And 
I have to do better. I also have to improve my English still a lot more. I consider myself bilingual, which I al almost am because uh, well, I had I had this talent of constructing uh, good uh, sentences in English very long. I know my teacher English uh, at some point in my uh, education. Uh, I had a man uh, as my teacher for for three years or three years or so, and in the fourth year he discovered that I const could construct very long sentences. I was very shy then and uh, not uh, too eager. I uh, tried to hide myself, and uh, I didn't like to uh, be called before the class. But he he did, and he said, "Let's see how he does it, and that's how you should do it." <laughs> <laughs> and that for several times and uh, so I, I then I was also uh, very able in in, in constructing uh, English sentences but not uh, as much I am now I can perfectly write magazine articles in English I can write very good uh, commercial uh, text in English although that's not my primary uh profession or even what I like to do but I'm very good at it it appears when I try so uh, but my pronunciation is not ideal but perhaps it isn't in Dutch as well I don't know <laughs> just as uh, little um, I do copy uh, other people's accents very much in Dutch even in German which gets me in trouble uh, sometimes because uh, when I speak to someone in the Bavarian region I can't always understand uh, I do understand most German but uh, I tend to speak their accent very quickly and my uh, my sentences in that in German are not are not perfect but my accent is so people uh, think I understand this accent as well and then they tend to speak very fast and I get into trouble but I do understand uh, some um, some, ac some some dialects from German that most Germans do, don't understand and I, uh, I discovered that because uh, in South America there are people from the, from the southern part and from Austria uh, who speak their own fairly uh, different uh, accent or language. Uh, and uh, there was a, a documentary about that, and Germans got subtitles for it and also said they couldn't uh, understand this uh, variant, also because uh, the South American uh, uh, people lived, lived in South America for over 200 years, in the first years, of course, uh, very much separated from the primary uh, region where the uh, dialect was spoken. So it developed kind of on its own and uh, uh, also differed uh, from the original for Germans, not a very understandable dialect. But I had no problem uh, in uh, understanding it at all. So that <laughs> but I watched a lot of uh, German television. I do like learning languages. Uh, learn, learning new lang languages is very interesting because uh, I only recently got uh, understanding how that works. Some languages are very, very difficult to me. But, uh, for instance, uh, what's spoken in, in the UK region of Wales, which is uh, a, a Celtic language. Uh, language that is uh, just as uh, some uh, Irish uh, a part of I I the Irish uh, territory and uh, some parts of Scotland uh, have this is very strange and odd and uh, I always thought Chinese is not uh, is not too difficult to me uh, I don't uh, I'm not very able in it but I can uh, read a couple of characters uh, quite quite a few which most uh, are in the technical technological uh, uh, in technological texts, and it's much uh, context uh, dependent uh, what uh, what it means. But 
I also do understand several words. And uh, if I listen longer to it, uh, I somehow uh, understand how the fabric of a language is. So I start to recognize patterns in it. And also similarities with other languages. But with uh, Welsh, the Celtic, uh, I, the Gaelic uh, language, that doesn't, that did, didn't happen. I also have the same problem with Danish, which is a Scandinavian language. And most Scandinavians do understand uh, each other's languages uh, to a large extent. They do recognize where they come from, but I do understand. So the differences between Scandinavian uh, languages probably is less than between Dutch dialects. Um, and whatsoever, I could understand Swedish quite easy, Norwegian fairly easy, but Danish I didn't got a grip on it. And only recently when I got to watch um, several TV series that I watched uh, purposely to uh, to learn, understand Danish better, I started understanding the language. And the same happened to Welsh, to Gaelic, um, to some extent, but I haven't spent enough time. What I mostly do is, uh, when I, uh, that, that's also how I learned, learned to, to understand French much more easy, is uh, taking a few months watching uh, the television news of their country, the national television news, especially the international news. Because the international news you know, you know from your own language, from English, and uh, then you know what the news is a little bit, and it's much easier to uh, extract that from what is said on the on the news bulletin. So uh, that's a good way to learn to learn a language, a very good way. And uh, when I was in France, I started understanding uh, the, the the daily uh, things you need to do your shopping and all kinds, uh, all that kinds of things. Very quickly, in a few weeks, I could manage myself fairly well. Although not being able to have a conversation uh, to some depth, depth, but I could understand uh, the easy things you need uh, on a daily basis. So uh, I think uh, I can. I don't. I don't travel very much. I don't like traveling. I always have to have to uh, get accustomed uh, to the region where I are, and then uh, after two weeks, I start to get my feet on the ground uh, there and have to go back to my own. Uh, uh, region of the world and uh, uh, I'm hungry I don't know if it's uh, audible but uh, <laughs> then I have to get my feet back on the ground there as well and establish my myself again so when I go away it's not longer than a weekend or something or two, two three days or one day also that limits myself in the distance uh, I've never been farther away than uh, Italy I only have been there once for three weeks, I guess, which was 21 years ago, so quite long. I have been in the neighboring countries a lot, especially uh, Belgium and uh, Germany. I've been to the UK once. I speak English rather well, but I've never been more than a weekend in an English-speaking country. So that's strange. <laughs> but there is television, there's the internet, and uh, a lot of people that speak English in the Netherlands as well, but uh, you can you can pick it, pick that up nowadays, and especially I I started learning learning English in the sixties when there was not a lot uh, in the media that was uh, purely English, except for the offshore radio stations and uh, Radio Luxembourg and all kinds of other stations on the medium wave bands which was quite international, and shortwave there was, although I didn't have more when I was a child than the 49 meter band in Europe, but uh, which was filled with stations then, of course, especially during the Cold War with all the propaganda being broadcast there. Very interesting uh, that wasn't as well, so... <laughs> okay. Well, that were some thoughts. Let's see how the next video 
um, will go. I decided to uh, to do only English, or mostly English. There might be uh, one or two Dutch uh, podcasts or vodcasts or uh, vodcast. It's almost like vodka <laughs> vlogs. How do you say it? Vlogs. But um, there might be a few that are in Dutch. I had two slips of uh, the language tongue in. Uh, in the PL368 video as well. Which was strange, that never hap- happens to me when I am speaking en- English, which is fairly easy for me, but I never uh, switched to Dutch. And uh, I did twice in that video. And I thought, what was, what, what am I doing? Um, but I did speak one one of the scenes it's uh, it consists of uh, i think uh 10 or 12 most uh, most of them very short and three very long uh, shots but i have to, had to do one of the medium long shots again because it was in dutch and that was strange that then that that never happens to me so perhaps i i do was i did i did was very nervous without noticing without noticing but uh Got to improve. With the DX headlines, it's going very well, fairly well. There are even some that I'm uh, quite satisfied about, but uh, also there I got to improve. Maybe I just have to listen uh, a bit of uh, radio in the accent that I want to present and uh, copy that to uh, what I'm mostly improvising. So... uh, Improvising goes best, I think, but scripting, hmm, I have, I have to, uh, I have to be more conscious about uh, my pronouns, pronunciations, then about my pronunciation, then. But uh, uh, so that's that's also difficult because when improvising, it's more difficult to uh, think of a certain accent you want to speak. I think. It, it's not more dis- difficult. You, you got extract. You got distracted easier. That, that's the problem, probably. Well, also do not to think. Do not think too much about these things because uh, do not think them over too much, because uh, probably that will be counter counterproductive as well. Okay, till the next. I would want to say, and how. Late is it? A quarter to seven. Very early, Friday morning. This podcast is made by myself. I'm Peter John in English Media. Title music is by Croatian artist Blasco and is published under Creative Commons. You can find this podcast on dmpodcast.net. DM is for daily minutes and on several other platforms. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl. Daily Minutes Podcast. Whoever hears this is crazy. En microfoon naar het toer. Deze uitzending wordt opgedragen aan Jurgen van der Broek, ON3JVB. Voor altijd de Joker van België.